Welcome to another flight review and the star of the show is the CRJ900. Today we are taking off from Nigeria's vibrant capital Abuja and then making our way to Lagos. Are you considering flying value jet CRJ900 and wondering if it's worth it? I'll share my experience from my last trip and let's find out if value jet CRJ900 economy class equals value for money. Founded in 2018, ValueJet began as a virtual airline and has quickly become a key player in Nigeria's aviation markets. They offer different classes of tickets, value light, value saver, value extra, value plus two, value premium. And we were booked on one of these classes of tickets, which is value extra. And this class of tickets allows you 23 kg checked baggage and 7 kg hand luggage. Before you make your booking, look into the condition of each class of ticket and choose the one that suits you. You are allowed to select seat in advance, which you can do 24 hours before departure through their online check-in. ValueJet operates four daily flights from Abuja to Lagos using this aircraft type. And now I'm on a mission to discover whether ValueJet gives travelers value for their money. We are traveling domestically. Here is a drop-off zone. You can see other cars. You can see people being dropped off here. This is the domestic terminal of the Nam, the Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, and it is divided into terminal B, C, and D, with each terminal serving different peoples or airline. And it always impresses me just how many Nigerian states you can reach non-stop from the domestic wing of the Nam, the Azikiwe International Airport, as all domestic flights either start or terminate here and serves as the second largest airport in Nigeria. Terminal B, where I'll be flying from today, primarily serves airlines like Asman Air, Value Jet Airlines, Rano Air, Max Air, and Arik Airlines, and has just one entrance. The process of entering the terminal has become more complicated and time consuming. Previously, you had to go through one extra machine after another, but now they have added a sniffer dog to the mix. What's the name of the dog? Pele. Pele. Pele, how are you? And why security is important, it feels like these extra steps are making things more cumbersome for travelers, especially during peak period. Do you think there's a need for these different layers of security checks at our airports? Let me know in the comment section if sniffer dogs are necessary in this setting. The distance from the terminal to the boarding area is in far, but I strongly advise you wear comfortable shoes. Terminal B doesn't have an escalator except for the aluminium stairs, and the boarding area is on the second floor. We've been using this staircase for over a decade now. It's sad, really. This terminal is in dire need of a complete overhaul. The minister should really look into it as a matter of urgency. Security and pre-clearance was straightforward. While we were ferried inside a bus to our aircraft, I noticed the bus was an innocent bus. I never really paid attention before. The bus was surprisingly comfortable and the driver told me they've had it for over two years now. And passengers love it. You can see how the bus looks like. We had a couple of them at the air site and why I'm actually emphasizing on this is because this is another indigenous success story. The tarmac had very few aircraft. We drove past Max Air Boeing 737. There's been a shortage of aircraft for some time now. Some are parked while others have been taken for maintenance. That is Green Africa ATR 72, Rano Ace ERJ 145. And over there is the star of today's show, the CRJ900, the backbone of value jets operations. With registration number 5 November Bravo X-Ray Romeo.
For passengers with reduced mobility, they are allowed to use the old International Departure Terminal, that is Terminal C, for easier A-side access. Boarding started on time and despite being nearly full flight, the process was quick and efficient. A lack of a luggage space can be a significant problem on regional jets, especially given the size of passenger bags nowadays. So be prepared for your bag to possibly be gate checked. There is no room for carry-on bags like this on the plane. So most are checked in or you drop it off at the foot of the plane. They have the first cargo hold, second cargo hold and then the back of the cargo hold. And my suitcase would get checked and put on the first cargo hold. I was very much looking forward to this flight. Here, everything is a bit more compact. My seat was an exit row towards the back of the cabin. I had no problem finding space for my carrier, though you can equally store it under the seat, but just remember that you have a little bit of leg room remaining for you, unless your bag is really very small. Once boarding was completed, the flight attendant, to my pleasant surprise, suggested I move to the free seat right behind the exit seat, having noticed my filming gear, and this was much appreciated. After everyone was boarded and seated, we were ready to push back. Please remember the generous This I Looking out through the window, I noticed the windows are blurry and not very clear. They have some scratch marks, which isn't related to the aircraft model itself, but rather the result of wear and tear over the years. The leg room was surprisingly good with decent seat comfort. However, there are no USB sockets. Fortunately, my seat back pocket was entirely junk free except for this security instruction manual. The cabin felt a bit claustrophobic, especially given the nearly full cabin. Shortly after takeoff, the flight attendants began their service. Despite the narrow aisle, they even managed to use a trolley, which is impressive given the limited space. We were served a simple snack pack. Inside, you have a cake, a croissant, juice, and water. The economy class has a 2-2 configuration. The seats are black leather with non-adjustable headrests, but are still nicely padded. Here's another thing you might not have noticed about the windows on the CRJ900. The windows are not as big and are misaligned with the seats, making it hard to get a good view. I had to lean forward just to get a decent view out the window. It's a common issue with this aircraft type, but worth noting if you're someone who enjoys a good window seat view. The cabin itself is very clean and I'm impressed given that the aircraft is about 18 years old but looks relatively new and well maintained. The attendants were attentive and efficient, and there were about four or five flight attendants in total. The FAA requires at least one flight attendant for every 50 seats on a plane. But on this 90-seater aircraft, they had around four or five attendants, which is huge, with two stationed in the economy cabin. 
Above each seat, you will find air vents, reading lights, and call buttons. I also checked out the lavatory. It was clean and not spacious. You had to be a small or medium size to use them, not for a king size passenger. After a smooth descent and a brief holding pattern due to weather that lasted for about 15 minutes or more, finally we were cleared to land. And unlike that, the captain kept us updated about the whole situation. Finally, we touched down at MM2 in Lagos. The disembarkation process was efficient. They managed it row by row, so everyone remained seated until it was their turn. This method was not only faster, but also more organized and smooth. After collecting my luggage, I headed to the multi-storage car park where a friend driver was already waiting. Filming at this airport is seriously frowned upon, so I didn't even bother. Nevertheless, the terminal has seen a lot of changes since my last visit. I noticed they now have a lot more offerings, which is good, and passengers can now have more options. And one top tip for passengers, get to the airport way before your flight, especially if you're driving yourself. Navigating to the multi-story car park is always a hassle during peak period. Now let's recap my experience and what I think of this airline. To wrap up my review of Value Jet Airline, the airline prioritizes on-time performance. I have to say that their customer service truly stand out, especially when it comes to ticket cancellation and rescheduling. It is here where Value Jet, in my experience, has been much more customer friendly. Despite a few minor drawbacks like the misaligned windows, lack of USB port, the overall experience was fantastic. The flight attendants in the economy cabin were spot on. The cabin was clean and comfortable and the service exceeded my expectation. The disembarkation process was efficient. 
Overall, I can genuinely say that I am looking forward to flying with Value Jet again.